Have you ever heard of the term get ready with me? Get ready with me. 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 If not, I invite you to crawl out from whatever rock you've been living under. <laughs> and let me introduce you to one of the internet's most popular video trends. And believe it or not, it has a lot to do with this iconic object. Part tutorial, part confessional, get ready with me videos, feature creators documenting themselves getting ready. We're talking beauty routine, we're talking bedtime routine, doing stuff like this to their eyeballs. All while sharing some pretty personal details about their lives. And we'll come back to that part later, but did you know that before Get Ready With Me was a viral video trend, it was quite literally a royal ritual. And that royal ritual just happened to inspire the invention of today's iconic object, the vanity. Vanity table, vanity desk, low boy, toilette, duchess, poudreuse, whatever you want to call it, and I do want to call it a poudreuse. Vanity has as many nicknames as it has phases in history. But before the modern glam station was popularized in countless films and movies of the 20th century, it was a commissioned furniture piece in the boudoir of the 18th century elite. And I think it's safe to say that the 18th century elite were the influencers of their day, especially in France, where Madame de Pompadour reigned as the most powerful influencer of them all. Official mistress to Louis XV of France, Madame de Pompadour was a valued member of the court, a staunch supporter of the French intellectual enlightenment, and a champion of the arts. And most notably, Madame de Pompadour was a style icon. She had drip from the rouge on her cheeks to the paintings on her wall. Her aesthetic decisions would galvanize the French art scene through pure influence. The Madame would give any of today's Instagram models a run for their 18th century money. Madame de Pompadour was the inspiration for the eponymous Pompadour hairstyle, as you may have guessed. And it is she that we can credit for inspiring the modern vanity. You see, getting ready from grooming to adornment is not a modern concept, nor was it in the 1700s. The practice of beautifying has been around since early civilizations. In fact, the ancient Egyptians were buried with their cosmetic artifacts. It wasn't until the 1700s though that beautifying was given its own workstation. And what a workstation it was. During this time, aristocrats and royals were readied in the company of others. The beautification process was so long and arduous that it was common to receive guests at this time. In France, this was actually a formal ceremony. They called it toilette. For the king, this public ritual was both an intimate invitation and a power play, as all good bathroom activities are. For other high society folk, they turned their lengthy beauty routines into frivolous social gatherings. I mean, I'm in, that sounds fun. But for Madame de Pompadour, boudoir business was business. And yet a woman as busy as she can't be expected to just be spending all day getting ready. She's got stuff to do. So she commissioned a table because Madame Pompadour was not just a visionary. She was a multitasker. Jean-François Aubin, am I pronouncing that right? Cabinet maker to the king and key figure in Rococo design fashioned a multifunctional table for Madame de Pompadour. It was called the mechanical table and it was a marvel of furniture engineering. Now at first glance, the mechanical table seems like a quaint writing desk, but then the top slides back revealing a drawer beneath that slides forward. Hidden buttons release drawers and compartments, and an elaborate mechanism allows the front panel to be lifted, rotated, and fixed upwards, revealing a vanity mirror on one side and a readying station on the other. And as with most of Madame Pompadour's design commissions, European high society took note of this furniture marvel, and well, the vanity popped off. 1810, 1812, 1835, 1850, 1888, 1890, 1910. And alas, we've arrived at the early 20th century with this modern egg family readying for the day. Sick. The early 20th century is an ideal place for us to pick back up as the Art Deco movement 
rolled back in and the vanity was once again transformed. And by the way, if you're interested in learning more about Art Deco, check out the first episode in the new season of A Style is Born. Kaz does an incredible job of explaining this design style. You're gonna love this episode. Art Deco was all about flamboyance and glamour and the future. And alongside this movement emerged Hollywood's golden era, where the flashiest descriptions of glitz and glam were depicted on screen. During this era, the vanity served as a popular film prop and even a symbolic setting, playing a major role in scenes where iconic heroines readied and bedazzled and delivered some seriously iconic lines. Are you decent? Me? Feminine depictions of this Art Deco golden Hollywood era helped solidify this dramatic performance of glamour into a dramatic performance of femininity. The vanity became modern feminine furniture. By this time, wearing makeup was socially acceptable for the modern woman. Movie stars became industry ambassadors, while magazines and advertisers pushed a concept of feminine beauty as something to be constantly worked towards and, of course, constantly on display. And so the vanity became essential feminine furniture. Inspired again by Hollywood, vanity mirrors came to include those bright bare light bulbs. And this iconic addition totally bedazzled our dressing tables with a Hollywood level glow and an undeniable mystique. What do you think inspired the ring light? Hmm? Thank you vanity for making my YouTube career possible and glowy as hell. the decades, the vanity went in and out of style as practical versus ornamental design philosophies duked it out in the interior design arena. The concept of having a whole furniture piece dedicated to beautifying seemed pretty extra, right? Still, the desire to have a functional space to store cosmetics and get ready never really went away. But that space became the bathroom. Wow, okay, yeah. Now I get why they're called bathroom vanities. In her 2013 article, The Unvain Vanity, Alexa Brazilian writes, to me, an ornate primping station seems a little well vain. However, having a proper place besides the bathroom to store makeup and perfume, dry my hair and eyeball my skin has always felt like a necessity and the lack of one, a sort of lifestyle tragedy. <laughs> I think it's worth mentioning that vanity furniture is having a resurgence and not for vain reasons. Let's circle back to my favorite acronym, GRWM. I briefly told you about this internet video trend at the beginning of the episode and went so far as to suggest that it originated in the 1700s. Now hear me out. In Get Ready With Me videos, beauty influencers, celebrities, and even regular people with regular routines sit at their toilettes and beautify themselves in front of an audience. But this time, it's just an audience of complete strangers. And just like the days of Madame Pompadour, Get Ready With Me videos are a multitasking format. The girls that want to go to grad school. I'm gonna go visit my husband, so I gotta look good. Get ready with me on my second shift in pediatric emergency medicine. Creators will do their beauty routines on camera and at the same time tell a story about their lives, an event, or something culturally relevant. And a lot of the time, Get Ready With Me videos become a sort of personal confessional, whether it's just to get something off their chest or share some hard-earned life wisdom. Get ready with me to get my life together. Creators offer up a surprising amount of internet authenticity, which in turn receives a ton of internet solidarity. Get ready with me builds community, folks. Christian Allaire writes, scrolling through the Get Ready With Me videos, I find them equal parts educational and comforting, making you feel like you're chit-chatting with a real life friend over FaceTime during the process. Can I also say, there's something kind of defiant about the Get Ready With Me trend. It's like the reclaimed social invitation into one's boudoir, except it's not a power play or frivolous formality. It's a full internet rewrite of beauty on display, all from the comfort of one's vanity. Listen, all I'm saying is maybe the vanity ain't that vain anymore. So when society declared that the vanity table was supposedly a feminine object, it's because glamour was decided a feminine concept. Mm, got it, got it, got it, got it. Interestingly, do you know what else has been deemed historically a feminine concept? 
vulnerability. Perhaps the vanity was considered a feminine object because the experience of glamour itself was vulnerable. Being barefaced and undone and undressed, even just in front of yourself, is vulnerable. Now imagine in front of people. <laughs> and we do it all the time with our roommates, our partners, kids. Madame Pompadour did it. People are doing it all over the internet. Getting ready in front of people from the earliest centuries to now is personal stuff. And in my opinion, you know what else feels historically feminine? Multitasking. From the 1700s until now, the vanity provided us a place to do it all, as we do, doing it all. A station for us to embrace the everyday with vulnerability and glamour. For us to take care of business and entertain and think and share and put on bronzer in the wrong place. It's a place for us to decide who we want to be, then and there, for the audience, for ourselves, in person and online. The vanity is many things. And most of all, it's iconic. Thank you to Wayfair, the home of so many iconic objects. Head over to their site if you guys wanna pick out the perfect vanity for you to feel beautiful inside and out. And like and subscribe for more culture-shifting furniture and decor. I'll see you next time. Mwah.